<clears throat> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Plika. I'm Jerome. And I'm Nick. And today we're talking about Salt Better. <laughs> <laughs> what? Better Call Saul Season 5, Episode 3. You're the guy for this. Sorry, I had a little stroke in that beginning. <laughs> that was interesting. Hank and Gomez back, baby. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, that was cool. Yeah, it's weird. I thought, like, because, like, Gus, he looks old as fuck. And when mm-hmm. Tuco was back, he looked old as fuck. But, yeah, but you get but, it, it. It's like the at first they're like, "Oh man, they look older." Now Gus is like, "Okay, he's not pulling off. This is a prequel." You don't think so? I feel like that's why they have every scene he's in. It's in like dark lighting, and he's from the back, or like oh, it's you can not barely see he's him. Creepy. No, well, it's supposed to be menacing, like a villain, but I think yeah. that's why. Yeah. Uh but for them, I feel like you. I, it seems like the same thing. Like it seems like them from early seasons. It's cool. I thought so too until we watched that behind the scenes thing and they showed him they season showed one, and I was like, "Oh down. wow, they look like freaking." They told, but yeah, you get over it real quick, and it's yeah. just cool to see them. Yeah, you can't, you can't want everybody from Breaking Bad to come in, and then when they come in, they go, "Oh god, they look old." Yeah, it'll be like yeah. if Walt and Jesse come in uh, the next season. We'll be like, "Wow, Jesse did not look like season one, Jesse." Yeah, but it's because he was like twenty thirty when he did that season. I still think they're gonna sneak either Walt or Jesse in the season. Like and in, I know in the last episode, I know they say they're not going to, and I don't believe them. I'd be happy with this. I'm not going yeah. to try to argue on that. I'd be cool with that. So but I do want to say, because I don't want to forget this. Me and you listen to the Better Call Saul podcast that they do, which I think everybody should listen to if you were watching a video on this. They're more informative than we are. I'd hope. Also, you could listen to us on iTunes and Spotify and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but they mentioned on there that like the Gus scene, or the Gene scene in the first episode was the longest one we've had. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that means more. So I took that as in their podcast. That there's gonna be more gene scenes this episode, right? Not because like I feel like it's obvious that there's gonna be another gene scene season six. Oh, they've done that for five seasons now. We were like, yeah, hey, guess what? There's more. Like obviously, right? So do you think that means there's gonna be another one this season? No. Do you think they're lying to me on that podcast? No, I think you took it the wrong way. You can't. You said Walt and Jesse to be it, and I played with you, man. You said I said. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know you love Gene, but like, you really don't think so? Do you think they're they like imagine like episode like five? They throw us a curveball and it's an all Gene episode. You don't think that's possible? All Gene? All Gene all day. I don't. Or at least the opening. I could see it. Because remember how they, I, they did I, that opening of it being in like Breaking don't Bad they do with him it. doing his shit? What if they did another one of that with Gene? I mean, they could. They could. They could do anything. It's their show. Um, well, they can't go to space. It's all good in space. I, um, I'd actually watch that. No, I mean, they could. Um... But I think they know everybody wants it, and I think they'll wait till next season. <sighs> I mean, it just it just seems way too obvious them being like. But I think there's I, gonna be more. I'm like, well, no fucking duh. It'd be but I think it guess. ends with Gene. I think it'll. I don't well, think. I think that's obvious too. That that the last thing ends with Gene. But I feel like I can't be. I don't know. I just the way they said it, I felt like it was too. It was it was a, like they didn't need to mention it. There was. But be in more that same podcast. Season. Vince Gilligan said he had nothing to do with this episode. That's true. And then he goes, "Well, I did film the and Robert I, Forrester scene, and then I did, and then I did direct episode eight of the season." And before that, you said, "Oh, I I can't believe he hasn't directed one." I go, "I think he just means this episode." And yeah, I'd be very do, surprised if he didn't direct it. They do one. more things weird. I guess you're right. And then you, go, oh yeah, he directed episode eight. And I yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. See. Yeah. So, I mean, I hate to. Okay. Thanks for proving me wrong, <laughs> asshole. Anyways, back to this episode. Um, I, I really, really like how they took the crazy eight being an informant and spun it into he, yes, he's an informant, but he's an informant for Lalo. Yeah. And like, he's, so, so do he, you so think he's an informant for them, which I was like, oh, that's cool. But like, if you watch the first, I just recently watched the episode of Breaking Bad where they catch him. I wanted to see that again before Saul. Mm-hmm. I watched it the other day and he, so he snitched on Captain Cook. Yeah. And they went there. So do you think Lalo was, and then and, and, not or crazy. We don't, remember, crazy we don't know what happens to Lalo. Yeah, it's true. Crazy Ed's cousin is the one working with uh, Jesse, Captain Cook. Yeah, and he's the one who got arrested. So it, was, it would seem weird to me if he snitched on his own cousin on purpose for Lalo and all. I mean, I guess he could be afraid of him and all that. But so, like, do you think well, that, La- do you think that'll stick, or do you think he'll become a real informant? Uh, it's maybe he's playing at both both sides. Like he can kind of make him because like, what does he care if Jesse goes to jail? Yeah. You know? And then that way he gets them off his back and he's doing stuff. Yeah, it's true. But I mean, I don't know that we'll, we'll ever know that necessarily. But I, f- I feel like at this point we'll kind of get... I feel like last season we'll get a lot of little things like that. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I feel like last season of the show will be like every fan's wet dream of like... 
It's so fun. Everything possible they could do. Now, this episode um, was really good. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot happened. I mean, stuff happened, but stuff like, happened, but like not, nothing. It, it was just little things moving. Like it's still pre- preparing for it. Yeah, which is kind of how the first episode was, um, and then the second episode was like, holy shit! Yeah. So, um, but I still loved it. Um, but I do think this is like the actual beginning of Saul because now he's yeah, because now he's doing it with actual criminals. And Nacho even said, "And once you're in, you're in." Mm-hmm. Which has been said over and over again. Well, and also, uh, this might get him into, like, because he, he doesn't know Gus, but he knows about Gus and can get them connected to Gus with Walt and Jesse. And he just set and Gus up. One, and now, yeah, he set Gus up. And now Nacho said, well, this, the lawyer knows the names. And, like, so he might yeah. get involved now with Gus and Mike and all that. So that would be kind of that connection. Yeah. Um. So one thing about him setting up Gus and not knowing that he's setting up Gus, basically. Yeah. I, I'm interested to see how this plays out because... Hank can't know that. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. So, so it'd be interesting. Like, a, they could have just a thing in place, like how they did at the laundromat, where people get arrested, calm down, you'll get your money, don't say anything. So maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe he has something with those guys, even though he's not as powerful now. Yeah, yeah. Has something in place for that, maybe, or like he tells them now, like, hey, I, hey, you're gonna get caught, but you'll be okay. But the, and also too, like you get if he gets rid of Lalo, and then he's even more powerful. Yeah, and that's how you know what I mean. So that's I assume that's what he's gonna do with Nacho. I like the fact that I didn't think he'd give Nacho up, but he could have yeah, gave him I up. Did, right here. Yeah, I really liked that too. That like Nacho's like, well, if if like they take the money, they're gonna know I snitch or someone right. snitched. And he's like, oh well, I do need like he didn't say this, but you can tell he's thinking, I do need Nacho. Fuck. And so like, and like, because he's his inside we've man. Seen, it's his. It's, he's his willing to CI. slit Victor's throat. Yeah. So if he needs someone, he'll, like he could easily get rid of him. So he's like, okay, I guess I need him. Yeah, but that, that no, was totally. Cool. That was really cool. Yeah. What did you think of the Kim stuff? I at first I thought, oh great, she's going back to Mesa for a day. I could give two fucks about this. Mm-hmm. But then I found it interesting her yelling at the old guy and all that. I didn't like that she went back. I was really hoping when she because like I've heard. So did you? Did I you, heard um, Bob Arnkirk hinted that there's something that she does this season that I'm like, oh man, she's slipping Kimmy. Like she does something oh, okay. that that's like unexpected. Um, so I thought, oh, is she going to go there and like, burn his house down or something? Oh, like, Jesus. no, no, you got to leave the land. Which, like, I was like, it doesn't seem very Kim-like, but I thought she was going to do something, like, f- f- like weird or, like, oh, we don't ex- expect that. But then she went there to be nice and, like, talk to the guy, like, hey, I got your house. Yeah, I'll help you move. And he's like, you'll do anything. you just get what you want, huh? And slams the door in her face. Good. Um, did you think it was going to work? Because I, I thought it was going to work. I did, too. The way he walked out there and looked down, she's like, I'll pay for it with my own pocket. And, and he, all like, this looked stuff. in like he's interested. And yeah. then, and then... He just slams the door in her face. I, I was actually wondering, too, at the beginning when she first talked to him, and she yelled at him and all that, that she was like, all right, bulldoze his house down. Oh, <laughs> and just like to get him out of there. But then she's like, no, come back tomorrow. It's 10000 After that, five, like, just keep going yeah. down. I liked when she like, got like hostile with him. Which she, we haven't seen that before, either. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, not, I mean, she's probably yelled at Jimmy, but like, she hasn't yelled at yeah. anybody else. Yeah, it's true. Or Howard. I guess she yelled at Howard, too, last season. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I... It just makes me want to watch another one. Yeah, I really fucking wish that they did the AMC Premium thing forty eight hours early. They do yeah. that for like who they go to watch The Walking Dead early. Ooh, who cares? Four people. Wow. <laughs> but like, I don't know why they did it for Preacher. I mean, technically, we kind of watched it early. Yeah, we like, watched it. We watched it like ten minutes early. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> um, I don't know anything else that happened in this episode. Um, Mamma Mia. Here I go again. Well, Lalo is slowly becoming one of my favorite people. Yeah, he's one of my favorite villains. God, he's so cool. I don't know. He's just so... I, I almost like wish I could change what happens so that way he was interacting. Because <laughs> it would be so interesting seeing this guy interact with Walt and Jesse. Oh, yeah. Because he's, he, he's like as creepy as Tuco because you know he'll do something bad. Like, even though I don't know, if we, I don't remember if we've really seen him do anything that bad. Oh, he killed that guy guy last season yeah i guess uh but i don't i mean he but nothing like to go like beating the guy to death but he just has that presence and that feeling that he's going to so yeah. i feel like he'd, he'd be like he's like a different kind of crazy than Tuco. yeah because he's like he almost looks like he could be your buddy and a sweetheart but then you know he reminds me of like burt reynolds oh must be burt reynolds or something <laughs> he, he just like a mexican burt reynolds yeah maybe um but like he's 
like when when Saul or yeah Saul Jimmy whatever he tries to get out of it. He's like, you know, I'm gonna. Be busy. Oh yeah, I'll be busy. At my, at my like, schedule. You'll make time. Yeah. And then he just gets in his car and drives away. He just doesn't give a fuck I about really anybody like, else. I really like before their meeting. Before he's like, he told Saul to go there, talk to Crazy Eight, get him prepared, talk to the DEA, all this shit. And before they even tell him the information, he's driving around in circles in his car. Like, isn't this cool? <laughs> I know. I don't know. I really like him. He's like, he's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard. It's it's. I'm surprised that he's this cool. I don't know. Like. Yeah. It's weird too, cause like it's so crazy. You know, that's how you know how well the show is written. Like, like I said, with the crazy eighth minute informant, this is the storyline we got from that. The Lalo comes from it wasn't me. It was Ignacio. This is about Don Lalo, and now we got all this going on. Like, it's crazy how much like storyline they have going on from a few one liners from Breaking yeah. Bad. I liked how when they got Saul, he originally he just goes back to uh, Nacho trying to rob that one place and him kind of... Oh, yeah, he thought that's what this was all about. Yeah, it's like, what do you think? He's been waiting this whole time? Yeah, he waited like a couple seasons to, yeah. to tell you about that. Yeah, that was... Interesting. And then why would he bring him to someone else? Yeah. So, but but he was immediately wanting to try and talk himself out of it. But, and I also like, it just shows how smart Lalo is, is because he's like, oh, yeah, Tuco told me about you. Yeah, I did like that. Yeah. He mentioned Tuco, and he's like, yeah, he said you were a talker. It's cool. You talked to those guys. He would have <laughs> would just killed him, but you got him right out of there. Yeah, like that was... Imp- that was cool and impressive, mm-hmm. and the fact that he picked up on it. Yeah. You know? And so, I, I did, like, too, when he was, like, talking about uh, Tuco, and he was, like, trying, like, Saul was trying to be all nice about him, and all of a sudden, he's got a temper, huh? And yeah. Saul's like, yeah, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. When, when, then he you, asked about his grandma. Do you, th- yeah, do you think we'll get Tuco this season? I mean, he, it either has to be this season or next season, because he has to get out, because he's in charge when it gets to Breaking Bad. It depends when they put down Lalo. Or well, whatever they're going to do to like, Lalo. Like, does he, do you think he only gets out of prison because they took down Lalo? Well, no. But, like, if Tuco came back, do you think he'd be in charge? No, I don't think think so. I think Lalo... But, like, he yeah. could be under Lalo for a bit. Yeah. I think he'd be in Nacho's spot. Probably, yeah. Do you think, at this point, do you think, with all that Nacho's twisted up in, do you still think he gets away scot-free, or do you think he's going to be in the dirt by the end of the show? And not what do you hope, what do you think? Because I know you have you have high hopes for him. You want him to survive and make it to Canada with his daddy, which his dad, his dad doesn't, seem, doesn't to. seem too happy with him and doesn't want to run away either. No. Um, I don't know how Nacho makes that out. But uh, I, I, have a, I have a bad feeling that he'll die, considering how, like, because he's very much the Jesse role in this show. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to kill Jesse. I'm but afraid was, they'll do that with him. That was season one. Like they were yeah. Gonna, but... um. I don't know. I, I don't see how Nacho can make it out. But yeah, unless he uses the vacuum guy, but yet, like, so they couldn't use Robert Forrester because he's dead, so I don't know how. Well, they could use him and just not show him. They didn't show him in. Yeah, I guess they could just have him on the phone from other yeah. conversations. Yeah. That's true. I mean, they never showed him. I guess they didn't show him until they went to his house <laughs> in Breaking Bad. Yeah. That's true. Um, but I think that's about it. I think we covered everything, really. We went all the way to Nacho's dad. The only thing we didn't talk about was Mike. He's a bit oh yeah, he, he's a bit he's, a, he's, a, he's still upset because of Werner Ziegler. Yeah, I mean, obviously he gets over it, but it's it's weird seeing him like this. Yeah, it's I, like he was in season one when he wasn't really over his son. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I wonder if it's kind of some mixed feelings about that because like he was upset about his granddaughter last episode with all that. Oh, when he went off on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that was a bit crazy. Yeah, that was awkward. Like it, I, I I didn't like watching that, but yeah. I mean, I get it. Yeah. We yeah. know they both get over it because they're together in Breaking Bad. Yeah, right. Uh, but all right, any, any any last things? Nah, I just can't wait for the next one. Yeah, me too. But all right, thanks for watching, everybody. Please like, subscribe, comment down below you thought about this episode, and we'll see you guys next time for episode four. Salt, better. <laughs>